G'day guys and welcome to the dock. Well, it's Country Week against Carlton on Sunday and we're celebrating all our fans from across this great state. Earlier this week, the playing group went back to their roots wearing their state jumper and we spoke with Sean Darcy about his ties with Country Victoria. So we had a sort of state of origin training, so all the boys got dressed up in the um, state that they grew up and played, so um, I dressed up in Vic Country, which was pretty fun, it was different seeing all the boys, there was a fair few WA running around. We always talk about interstate rivalries, but is there a bit of rivalry too between Vic Country and Vic Metro? Yeah, there's always a rivalry between us two, but it's all fun and games. A bit of banter out right there on the field then? Yeah, it was a lot of fun, we had a little... Um, challenge at the start of training. Um, I think South Australia got up which was disappointing. Big country wasn't the greatest but we'll get there, we'll bounce back next week. Yeah. AFLW best and fairest player Ebony Antonio has a special tie with her country town of Borough Coppin. That's 280 kilometres east of Perth where a cup is named in her family's honour. My earliest footy memories um, would have to be um, back, back up in Barra Coppin, running at half time on the field, kicking the footy, and um, if they were lucky enough to get the win, I would go into the change rooms and sing the song with the boys. My family come from the Wheat Belt, so from Meriden and Westonia, um, and Barra Coppin's in between there as well. So um, my dad used to play for the Barra Coppin Cats up in Barra Coppin, obviously, and um, he had three brothers as well, and they all play for Barra Coppin. And, um, so my pop, he was actually the um, coach coordinator at the time and um, in 1988 they won the championship all together so that was really um, a special moment for them. I think when you're young it's really important to be around family and have that real connection when you're younger because you know as, as of the Antonio stand now we're a really tight family and I think that's all to do with the fact that you know when we were little we all had that connection and mum and dad made the effort to head back up every weekend. So a couple of weekends ago I went back up to Barra Coppin. It's been years since I've been up there so it was really good to get back. Um, special occasion being the Antonio Cup and that's played between Barra Coppin and Nakani and um, previously um, Barra Coppin had been playing out of Meriden just purely because of the fact there's nothing in Barra Coppin any, anything anymore. Um, the pub and everything's closed down so you know the community came together and really patched up the oval down there at Barra Coppin and held the um, game there for more last time. It's really important that you know football and the community up in the country because it really brings towns together. Um, you know, when I was back up there a couple of weekends ago, you know, people are bringing in morning tea and you pay two bucks and you get from biscuits to cake. So I think, yeah, it's what they look forward to every single weekend coming together as a community. Well, the Great Lee Spur has had an amazing career after being drafted as a mature age rookie back in 2012 and playing 120 games. Now, if you ever saw his highlight package from the Sandville, it was off the charts. Now he sat down with us to chat about the hard conversation he had to have with senior coach Ross Lyon. So after seven years and I've um, come to the decision with my wife that uh, it's time for me to retire. Um, my body sort of let me down a little bit this year, I've had some issues um, and it's, it's a hard decision. I, um, I love my time at the club so it's really hard to say goodbye and I, I wish I could play on. Um, but for me, uh, my knee is sort of telling me that it's time for me to go and I've been battling with that all year. Yeah, so I sat down with Ross privately off, offside and we went, went and sat down and had a chat and we, in my head I was sort of thinking we'll go there, it's going to be pretty hard to say and I felt nervous. I sort of felt like I was letting him down a little bit by saying I couldn't go on um, and I thought this will probably get over and done quickly, in about 20 minutes we'll get it done. I ended up sitting there for three and a half hours with him and it was fantastic and we spoke about all sorts of things. I really enjoyed that um, but he has been a massive part of my football journey and I don't say this lightly but I think I got drafted to the or rookied to the best club possible for me I think if it wasn't for Ross I wouldn't have played anywhere near the same amount of games that I played and um, his drive for you to become a better person on and off field has really flowed into me um, and I hope that flows through to other players in the group and I think that if everyone can sort of keep buying in the club's going in a good place and um, like every player you have up and down with your form, but he, he backed me in to always come back and um, that's a huge reason why I got to play a lot of AFL football. I would say stick stick with the, the boys because the first premiership's just around the corner and I, I truly believe that and I hope it happens very soon for the, for the group. 
Well, that's it for this week. Remember, Bounce Down is at 2.40 on Sunday at Optus Stadium. A big shout out too, of course, to all our country fans who make the journey up every fortnight. This game will be dedicated to you. Let's go, Dockers.